Afternoon all. I thought I'd play one or two games this afternoon. And I am okay to start the day, start the afternoon off. Um, how about Benko Gambit again? That was kind of nice last time. Uh, people are accepting the Gambit or? Okay, I'm going to delay taking on b6. I'm not going to take with the Queens. I don't want that maneuver, knight f3, d2 to c4 to hit my Queen. Instead, I'm going to uh, maybe play a5 and bishop a6, then knight d7 and knight b6. Um, I'm hoping I can do this. So he's playing uh, a system I've written about on the Barnet uh, Chess Club website some time ago. This B6 system. Um, in fact, I think I, end, I ended up recommending. Oh, I ended up recommending an early um, E6. I think, and that was played against me by Eames once in uh, the Barnet Congress, one of the Barnet Congresses, and he got a good good game actually. Uh, so maybe it's not that brilliant um, sometimes if black knows what uh, they're doing. Um, what about e6 here? Is e6 here to those? Or oh, just just trying to actually undermine b5 maybe an idea because the knight's a bit loose actually on b5, uh, even though it seems to be protected by the a4 pawn. If something like queen d7 and knight a4, it could mean that that's a loose knight and he's not taking actually. Right, he's not taking with the knight, interesting. So if I do this, so he's using the queen for that b5 slot. So if I play queen c8 to a6, and again try and get some nagging pressure on b5, I'm surprised actually he's using his queen now, not say on the king side of like f4 and e5. Uh, so if I just try and challenge the b5 square, even though it seems to be secure, if I play queen a6, rook fb8, I'm hoping for b5 pressure. If he took, takes, you can imagine knight b5, knight a4, then taking on b5. Let's see, he's going to go for the exchange of queens. I've got nice control over e5 here, I hope. Um, okay, he's just leaving the queen there. So is f6 a bad idea here? Or bishop f6? What about bishop f6? Ah. I could play bishop f6. Because if he takes, I get double pawns, but I stop e5 for a while. Maybe that's good. It's sort of dynamic. I get the e file. Um, okay, back to this b5 issue. He's on, going to be on d6 though, pretty soon. And this knight e5 to c4. Can I play knight e5 to c4? He's going to play f4. He's going to ruin my idea already by playing <laughs> f4. Oh dear. Okay. <sighs> okay, knight b5 would be on d6. What about c4? Is that too risky? I'm hoping it isn't, just to be able to play uh, knight c5. If I can get to play knight c5, then maybe, I don't know, a4 is a bit more vulnerable. You'd have to keep a rook on a1. Uh, by the way, I've been reading uh, more of Kotov's book uh, on Alexander Alakine. Very colourful life indeed. Um, very colourful, very interesting read. I, I think I might have to order some uh, of Alakine's books actually. Um, and what struck me actually he was a very good annotator as well. Vo vo very um, his annotations actually helped find his weaknesses. You know when he did his annotated game books, so it was a uh, dual purpose, really. I think it's knight knight a4 here, knight d6, knight b2. Oh, I lose c4. So knight a4, say rook a4, rook b5, knight c4. So I just get a weak a5 um, pawn. But I've got to do something about uh, d6. Uh, so what about this knight c5 then? Just let him take on d6. So I can take on a4 with this one. Uh, but then knight c4, knight c4, rook a4, knight b2. I've still got a weak pawn. I'm attacking his rook there and d6. Um, yeah, and I mean, Kotov does relate. <clears throat> uh, let's talk about after. So knight takes a4 here. Oh, he's going to be on c4. But I'm going to try and be on um, on b2 at the end of this. I don't know who's going to be better at the end of this. Um, oh, I'm going to end up losing a pawn. Is that a pawn? Because uh, knight takes b2, there's rook b1. 
I'm losing a knight. So I've just lost the pawn. And this rook, b4, can I try and turn the tables? He's got a strong d pawn now, potentially. Oh no. It's all gone. Or has it? Hang on, e4 might drop now. If knight a5, I can try and win e4 and try and block the d pawn. Uh, so knight a5. Okay, knight. Uh, this pawn's a bit of a runner. Can I try and get my king involved to stop it? Or is it too dangerous already? It's probably too dangerous. So d7, king e7. There is no. Um, oh. Is he going to take with the rook? If I take. Uh, I think I've got to try and travel that road. Or is he going to take with the pawn? Probably he's going to take with the pawn. Nope. Okay. So, big trouble. Um, maybe I can take Namrook. What about a4? Just to try to disrupt, disrupt c4 for a sec. And d7, I've got rook a8. Just, I think, that's why being a little bit longer. I don't really bank on my position here. Last thing much longer. But the a4 pawn is supported by the knight. If I can avoid rook e8 disaster and play rook d8, maybe a takes b if I'm lucky, uh, which is not going to happen. I doubt it. <sighs> okay. I have to defend that. Oh dear. Rook e8 is a big threat. You can just play knight d6 now. Oh dear. Can I just take an home check, king g7? He can't queen yet, but he takes and then plays rook a8. Oh dear. And that's rook d8 immediately, so knight d6 I can take. I think I'll play rook d8 immediately. Uh, this this pawn's going to be running soon. But I've got knight b5 against it. Whoops. Uh-oh. That's not good. I've just dropped a piece. Oh, I've just dropped the knight. It's gone. It just takes the knight. Oh well. <laughs> Resign here. Oh dear. Um, dangerous. I am. I don't know what to say. It just uh, it didn't work out very well, did it? The center pawns came through. The center pawn rather very strong. Very nice. Okay. Uh, comments or questions on YouTube. Uh, where, where could I have improved here? I was surprised actually with the Queen's occupation of b5. Maybe that's a better way than I'm playing it in uh, in Bullock. Because I'm usually taking with the Knight, leaving a vulnerable Knight. But by taking with the Queen, he's just keeping a very good bind on b5. So that's I think that's interesting actually. And what happened here was was kind of c4 is too vulnerable. So probably c4 was a bad mistake. If I wanted to try and keep solid. Which is probably an idea against IMs. Then C4 is not solid. It's it's kind of a weakness. So it's not kind of solid, is it? To play C4 for knight C5. It was trying to get a bit of more uh, out of the pieces, but it's losing ultimately the C4 pawn here. Um, or the D6 because if I you know after this, how do I defend? If I just actually done a move like maybe even King F8 to E7, just just so I can. Just play king e7, you know, king f8 to e7, because e5 is actually being stopped by the double pawns. So maybe that's almost feasible, although it does sort of ask for an e5 later as a sacrifice for d6. I don't know. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.